All right, good afternoon, everyone, or morning, depending on your location. For those of you I haven't met yet, I'm Seth Gerson, Program Director for K-12 Education here at NGA. Uh, welcome, thank you for joining us today for a briefing on the recently released 2021 State of Computer Science Education Report. As most of you know, our chair this year, Governor Hutchinson of Arkansas, has chosen to focus his chair's initiative this year on K-12 computer science education. Details on the chair's initiative can be found at www.nga.org backslash computer science. Um, and we'll put a chat uh, for that in, in the, uh, the chat function. I'll put a link for that in the chat function. Um, this dedicated webpage, it covers background strategies and resources on computer science education. There's videos from a convening in Denver of bipartisan governors speaking on this issue. And there's a video of Governor Hutchinson's remarks from the public launch of the initiative in October at the National Press Club in Washington, DC. There's also on the website right at the top, the five policy goals for the initiative. And I wanted to note right from the start that we have multiple upcoming uh, opportunities for your member to be engaged on the chair's initiative. We plan to have a dedicated session on computer science education at the annual winter meeting in January 2022 in Washington, DC. We'll then also have regional meetings on the chair's initiative in Bentonville, Arkansas in March 2022 and Boston, Massachusetts, in May 2022. Those invites to governors are forthcoming in the, in the next few weeks. Uh, please also note that at the winter meeting, we plan to ready a draft compact or consensus statement for governors to sign on to for committing to expand computer science education in their state, which will then unveil at the summer meeting in July 2022. So please reach out to any of us anytime with questions on the chair's initiative. Well, with that background, I'll introduce our two speakers for today to walk through the findings of the new report and answer any of your questions on it. First, Dr. Katie Hendrickson is president of the Code.org Advocacy Coalition and director of state government affairs for Code.org. Second, Dr. Carol Fletcher is principal investigator for the Expanding Computing Education Pathways or ESEP Alliance, which seeks to support states on increasing the number and diversity of students in the pipeline to computing and computing intensive degrees. So Katie, with that, I'll hand it over to you. Excellent, thank you so much. And thank you for having us. Um, it's very exciting to be able to be here with you all to share some of the insights from our latest report. So uh, Carol and I are here to share the 2021 State of Computer Science Education, Accelerating Action Through Advocacy. This is our annual report on basically the state of computer science broadly across the nation and in every single state, combining policy adoption, and data on student participation in and access to computer science in uh, K through 12 education. So Carol and I are two co-authors of the report representing Code.org and the ESEP Alliance. And we have a third co-author, the Computer Science Teachers Association. But of course, <laughs> all of the work that is put into creating this report um, would not be possible without all of the educators on the ground who are doing this work the school leaders, the state policy makers, governor's offices, all of our sponsors and supporters and advocacy partners who really make the computer science education effort possible. So I will start with a couple of the key takeaways from the report, some of the high level national data points and trends that we have seen. First, this report is the annual launch of the latest update on high schools offering computer science. So at this point, more than half of all high schools finally, for the first time, offer computer science. So this is amazing, tremendous progress, especially when we uh, look back at when we first started collecting and reporting this data, 35% of high schools were offering computer science. We're up to half. This is amazing. This is you know, incredible growth. But at the same time, it's still only half. There's still 49% of high schools that don't offer computer science. And there are disparities in those types of high schools that offer computer science and those that don't. So students who attend urban and rural schools are less likely to have access to even a single computer science course 
compared to students in suburban areas. And schools with high populations of economically disadvantaged students are also much less likely to offer computer science. So although we've seen growth, we're still continuing to see some of these disparities. And as a group, as folks in, interested and invested in expanding computer science education, we need to start accelerating the closing of these gaps. One other way to look at uh, access to computer science is to look at the students who attend these schools. Uh, many of the students who attend schools uh, that are small tend to not have access to a computer science course. So across the nation, 78% of students attend a high school that offers computer science. But even then we see disparities for race and ethnicity for black students, for Hispanic and Latino and Latina students. And in particular for Native American students, only 59% of US high school Native American students attend a school that offers computer science. And when we dig into why that is, we learn that on reservations, only 20% of those high schools offer computer science. So we know where we need to go to start reaching those students and to give them the same opportunities. Now, this is also different across states. You'll see that some states like Arkansas and South Carolina are in the 90s, 90% of, of their high schools offer computer science, whereas some states are in the 20s. Uh, so fewer than 30% of their schools, of their high schools are offering computer science. So there is a difference among states um, and we really want to know why that is. When we dig into the data, states that have more policies that prioritize computer science education in K-12 see a greater percentage of their high schools offering computer science. So if we want to make progress on closing those gaps and ensuring that every student has those same opportunities to decide to take a course if they want to, we need to accelerate the adoption of these policies that essentially make computer science a core fundamental part of the education system. It's been an elective for far too long and we need to see it being part of this comprehensive system. So which policies you might ask? These are the nine policies that the Code.org Advocacy Coalition and our partners have worked on to make computer science core. So creating a state plan, developing computer science standards, having funding to support the development of computer science teachers, having certification pathways for those teachers and pre-service programs that prepare teachers so that they graduate ready to teach it. Having someone at the state level who is supervising the computer science education efforts and then requiring that schools offer it and allowing students to count it towards a required graduation credit and a higher admissions credit. These are nine policies that we track and report on and see growth in every year. And states that adopt more of these end up seeing more schools offering computer science. These policies really do help and they really do matter. Um, so a couple highlights from the policy adoption that we have seen. In uh, the last fiscal year alone, 21 different states allocated more than $65 million of state funding for expanding computer science education. These are all the states that have allocated state funding over the past two years. This is more than any year previously. There's a lot of growth here, a lot of potential, and a lot of investment in computer science. We also saw over this past year that every state now has a policy to allow students to substitute a computer science course for a core graduation credit. So every student in these states can then when they take a computer science class, apply it towards a core graduation credit. Now, what we also see is that three states now require all students to take computer science for graduation. That's Nevada, Arkansas, and South Carolina. And across those three states, there is a significant difference between the, the percentage of high schools that offer computer science in those states compared to other states uh, that, that merely allow students to substitute it for a graduation requirement. Um, those are just two of the policies that have seen growth, but overall over the past year, uh, we saw 31 different states adopt or adapt 50 different computer science education policies. So there is a ton of momentum that we want to make sure that we're continuing. 
I'm going to turn it over to Carol to take us through the data. All right. Uh, thank you, Katie. And um, we're really excited about the fact that we've hit this, you know, half of high schools in the state of, in the in the country offering computer science. Uh, but when we actually look at participation, we still have uh, many miles to go before we sleep. Even though half of the high schools in the country are offering computer science right now in any one year, only 4.7 percent of U.S. high school students are enrolled in a computer science course. And quite frankly, this is really kind of an economic train wreck for our country if we don't change those numbers. It's simply not adequate to meet the needs of the workforce of the future and not just jobs of the future, but just the fact that we need to have these educated citizens that understand computing and the impacts of computing on their lives. Um, so 4.7% means we've got a long way to go. Uh, next slide. Now, when we talk about disparities in, in computer science, um, one of the things that we do see is that when we start early, such as computer science in elementary school, we really have gender parity. At the elementary level, um, we have about 49% of students enrolled in computer science are female. Um, middle school, we're still looking fairly good. It's when we get up to this high school level that we see these disparities in participation. Uh, which means we've got to change not just access, but how are we actually teaching computer science? How are we recruiting students for computer science? And how are we marketing uh, computer science to students and families as well? Next slide. Um, we also see some, some really persistent gaps in uh, student representation based on other characteristics. This slide shows kind of the percent of students across the country of uh, certain student populations and in the darker bar and then the lighter bar is the percent enrolled in computer science. So you see, we do have some gaps between uh, how many English language learners we have across our country and uh, how many of those students are actually enrolled in computer science. And then the same thing for um, students under IDEA, uh, special ed services, and then economically disadvantaged students. So even when students have are attending schools where they have the opportunity to take computer science, we're still seeing some disparities in who actually enrolls in computer science. Next slide. Uh, and, you know, most notable are these disparities for really our Hispanic and Latinx students. Uh, when we look at this based on, you know, race and ethnicity, we have really um, across the country, not necessarily in individual states, some parity for our Black and African-American students between student population and enrollment. Uh, same thing for white students. Asian students are, are overrepresented compared to their student population, but our Hispanic and Latinx students are clearly underrepresented uh, in these CS courses as compared to their school population. Next slide. Uh, and so when we want to think about how do we address these disparities and these equity gaps, we need to think about not just what's happening at the end of the line with high school course enrollment, but we've got to think about how equity is playing out at every level of the CS education ecosystem. And we use a framework we call the CAPE framework for looking at that. And CAPE stands for Capacity for Access to Participation in and Experiences of Equitable CS Education. Mm -hmm. So if in your state, you're thinking about developing an overall plan for how do we, how do we ensure that we um, both increase the number and diversity of students enrolled in computer science, you've got to ask questions at every level of the system. Is the capacity for CS education equitable across your schools? Or is it constant or are, for example, certified teachers concentrated in mainly affluent and suburban school districts? Uh, and if you think about putting equity front and center and a systems approach front and center when you start your efforts, then you're not going to be caught at the end trying to fix at the end the problems that were baked into the system all along. Next slide. Um, the good news is we can, we actually now as a nation are able to really dig deeply into this data. We've essentially doubled the number of states that are able to report disaggregated data about um, students and enrollment in computer science. 
And that's a really great uh, outcome. But we, you can see 35 states are the, the largest number with race and ethnicity data. We still have a significant number of states that really can't tell you who's enrolled in computer science. And that is a problem because you cannot make an investment to solve a problem if you cannot define that problem with specificity. Um, and so it's important that your state um, really has this disaggregated data systems so you can identify gaps and develop solutions to address those individual gaps. Uh, next slide. Uh, we wanted to highlight the top five states with access to computer science today and just give a shout out to them, honestly, because they have done a tremendous amount of prog uh, made a tremendous amount of progress. Arkansas, where Governor Hutchison is from, no surprise, they are at, at the top of the list with 92% of high schools in Arkansas uh, actually offering computer science, along with South Carolina. Maryland, Rhode Island, and Nevada are not far behind. So all of these states have done really an outstanding job of ramping up their access to computer science. And so our next question is, okay, what do they have in common? Next slide. Um, what is it about these states that makes them particularly successful in um, being able to bring so much access to computer science? One of the first things that we see with all of these states is they all have developed a state strategic plan for computer science education. They didn't kind of willy nilly pass some policies and then hope for the best. They actually developed a strategic plan in which they have a game plan for how they are going to increase not only access but participation and other aspects of computer science. Next slide. I mean, next one. Um, all of these states have also explicitly invested in computer science teacher capacity. And I, I wanna point out that, you know, we have to acknowledge the fact that the system that we have for preparing teachers simply does not produce teachers that have the skill set they need to teach computer science right now out of the universities. And it is going to take a coordinated and concerted approach to upskill teachers. We need to think about the computer science teacher workforce issue as part of the broader uh, computing industry and high tech workforce issue. Computer science teachers are part of that workforce that we've got to invest in. Next slide. Um, all of these states have also actually added a point person at the uh, state agency. The state computer science supervisor is there to really be the point person and manage and track um, the work that they are doing across their state. And then lastly, um, most of these states have also required all high schools to offer computer science. So they're using their accountability systems as a lever to encourage these, these states and create in, incentives for these states. Rhode Island doesn't have a like statutory requirement, but they've done quite a few other things to really engage every single high school in their state in um, computer science. Next slide. So uh, as, as policy uh, leaders in your states, what can you do? Um, first of all, I think it's important to really think about from this equity lens. What we say is equity is baked into each of these nine policy um, so solutions, but it's important to be really explicit about how are you ensuring that you are addressing equity as you develop a strategic plan in your state? Um, how are you addressing equity in the leaders that you're bringing to the table um, and in the way that you're engaging your, your entire community in developing support for schools? How are you addressing equity in the funding and the development of teacher capacity? Do your teachers have the capacity to deliver inclusive computer science courses? And um, are you actually thinking about what do the teachers who are teaching computer science look like? And are they role models for your student population? And then lastly, are you requiring all schools to offer a, a computer science course so that computer science isn't perceived to be something that only rich and affluent schools um, should be offering and everyone else uh, it's a, a wish to instead of a must, must have. Um, also, another thing that you can do is really joining the Governors for CS uh, Coalition. 
this is a group of, of governors across the country and uh, that are focused very much on how are we leveraging the bully pulpit of the governor's office and uh, state policy in order to promote computer science education. And then lastly, working with the National Governors Association, Code.org, the ESEP Alliance and CSTA. I wanna emphasize that you don't really have to start from scratch. There are probably people at the ground level in your state, in every single state, that are already doing this work. And connecting with those people will make your job uh, a lot easier as you're elevating this to uh, a state initiative. All right, and last slide. Um, so as Katie said, uh, and uh, we released the State of CS report uh, two weeks ago during the CS EdCon in Los Angeles, you can actually download the entire uh, report PDF online for free. Uh, you can also download state handouts with a regional comparison. So you can download a handout specifically for your individual state uh, that is different from what is included in the, the full report. So greater detail than what is even in the full report for every state. And then code.org has created a uh, really amazing online interactive data visualization where you can dive into the data for your specific state and for schools and districts in your specific state. And I would highly encourage you to take a look at that. If you're not really sure what the landscape of computer science education is in your state, that's a great place to start. 